speculated that an extraterrestrial civilization might have attempted to communicate by transmitting messages in the universal language of mathematics, perhaps through a recognizable pattern like a series of prime numbers. You're not going to get that by chance. So you need complexity or improbability, lots of prime numbers, and you also need a uh, pattern. And it has to be the right sort of pattern. It's not a pattern that you're imposing. It's a pattern that's, that's there objectively. To date, SETI research has failed to detect any pattern or information that would indicate intelligence in a distant galaxy. But in another universe, much closer to home, scientists have discovered a wealth of information within the nucleus of the living cell. Oh, really? Well, let's apply Dembski's own example of specified complexity to the human genome, shall we? Perhaps through a recognizable pattern, like a series of prime numbers. You're not going to get that by chance. So you need complexity or improbability, lots of prime numbers, and you also need a uh, pattern. And it has to be the right sort of pattern. It's not a pattern that you're imposing. It's a pattern that's, that's there objectively. And the pattern's not there objectively, is it, Dembski? The probability of finding this string of 34 base pairs representing the prime numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11 in a random string of base pairs is about 1 in a billion trillion, which of course is exactly the same probability as finding any random string of 34 base pairs. Given that there are only about 3 billion base pairs in the human genome, it seems sensible to assume that the reason Dembski has never actually looked for his own example of specified complex information in the genome is because he knows he will not find that. It is also noteworthy that Dembski, who is touted by the creationist organization the Discovery Institute as one of their senior research fellows, claims on his CV that he was a professional witness in the Dover vs. Kitts Miller trial of 2007. Dembski again finds himself at variance with reality in that, ignoring for the moment the fact that Dembski withdrew from being a professional witness without giving a word of expert testimony, the Dover trial was in 2005, not in 2007. Three members of the Discovery Institute were originally listed as professional witnesses in the trial. All three withdrew at the last moment without explanation. Yep, that's right, the Discovery Institute, the hub of the intelligent design movement, was not willing to defend intelligent design under oath. Dembski has also made some interesting comments on the trial judge, Judge Jones. Before the trial... Uh, as soon as they found out Judge Jones, he said, Judge Jones is a good old boy brought up through the conservative ranks. A political buddy of Governor Tom Ridge, who is in deep in George W. Bush's circle of power and was appointed by GW himself. Senator Rick Santorum is a Pennsylvanian in the same circles. And last but far from least, George W. Bush himself drove a stake in the ground saying, teach the controversy. Unless Judge Jones wants to cut his career off at the knees, he isn't going to rule against the wishes of his political allies. Uh, Bill Dembski himself, actually, before the Dover trial came up, when this was still sort of speculative, made a little bet. I'll wager a bottle of single malt scotch should it ever go to trial, whether ID may legitimately be taught in public school science curricula, that ID will pass all constitutional hurdles. And how does the Discovery Institute, for which Dembski works now, view Judge Jones? Jones's ruling is poorly argued, and its discussion of intelligent design as science is largely inaccurate. It is in many ways a shame that the Discovery Institute is willing to blame the United States judicial system for their lack of willingness to defend intelligent design in court. But let's get back to the details, eh, Dembski? On a seashore, another improbable pattern etched into the earth illustrates how we detect design. No one would infer that this message was written by the movement of the tides. Instead, because of the characteristics of this pattern, we identify the words as the products of intelligence. That improbable arrangement also conforms to an independently given pattern, namely the shapes of the letters that we recognize from English alphabet and the words that we know from English vocabulary. And so it's the improbability of the arrangement plus the fact that it conforms to an independently given pattern that triggers the awareness of design. 
Actually, the reason we know that writing in the sand is human is because we've seen people writing in the sand, and also because there's no known natural phenomenon that produces such features. The world is full of complex patterns that are known to be entirely natural. I mean, take for instance the beach itself. It's complex, it's improbable. I mean, what are the chances of finding all those trillions of almost perfectly sized sand grains organizing themselves at a gentle angle between the land and the sea and not getting washed away? Does this mean the beaches require a designer? I mean, if Myers here had his way, the answer would be yes. Take another example, these rings. If you examine these rings in detail, you'll find that they are sorted by stone size and are almost perfectly circular. Well, I'll let you dwell on that for a moment to work out if you agree with Dembski that these specific, complex and improbable patterns are, as Dembski would state, proof that these objects were made by an intelligent designer or not. You see, a correct version of Dembski's argument would read something like this. If you come across an unknown phenomenon for which there is no current naturalistic explanation, this does not mean that a naturalistic explanation will not be found in the future, nor does it mean that this process or phenomenon is due to an intelligent process or designer. All it means is the explanation for the phenomenon is currently unknown. The unknown is not proof for the existence of God. However, Dembski then goes on to look for complex specified information in DNA, where it is known to have a natural origin. Dembski then ignores everything that is known from biochemistry and biology about DNA, and ignores the prospect that there could be a natural origin for the information in DNA, and simply jumps to the erroneous conclusion that DNA is designed. Now let's apply Dembski's argument to the beach. Dembski looks at the beach and says, if I ignore everything that I know about beach formation and decree that no natural process could have formed the beach, then I can conclude that the beach is designed. And so the whole fallacy of this non-argument is laid bare. Now let's return to our bizarre stone circles, and even more bizarre to see in person. It's actually a product of frost heave and needle ice. Needle ice forms more rapidly in areas without stones, and so tends to push stones outwards. This also has the effect of sorting them by size. Depending on the freeze-thaw cycle, you can get all sorts of funny patterns. Polygons, networks, piles, ridges. You can even get them on other planets. But the one thing you can't conclude, unless of course you're a creationist, is that the only explanation for these objects containing complex specified information is they can only be accounted for by an intelligent agency such as stone-sorting pixies.